the king. The king of kings. Before we start that segment, there are a few technical thingies with the show itself. Like if you watch it on a mobile device or even on an application on a TV that supports YouTube videos playback, you will not get those speech bubbles. And sometimes there are trailers in those links. Um, I, I usually put s several stuffs, uh, stuff, excuse me, and you're gonna need to watch the whole show and it's extreme experience on YouTube to get all the action and miss nothing and also um, I realized if you sh watch my show um, using a headphone you will notice um, like an air in your ears or something you won't not hear me quietly or you won't hear me correctly and stuff like that so just watch the show on your iPhone speaker, on your laptop speakers, on your TVs, loudspeakers, but do not use a headphone because that will produce some weird sound and I will get to the bottom of that. And now with the extremely reloaded segment, obviously I've loved it, so let's go on and see what we got. Last week we started off with 360's Chandler getting broken or just damaged by a teenager via Crocs, but right now, reporters have been reporting that there have been minimum amount of damage and you cannot even see the damage on the Chandler itself. I haven't seen it yet for myself, but reporters are saying that you cannot see the damage by yourself or in your own eyes. You need to, like, look at it in a good way or something like that. So, no harm was done and I believe they will be, they will be dropping the charges against that teenager. Let's move on. We got... Twitter trends, not any normal trends. We got Islamic Twitter trends. If you don't know what trend is, then you are living under a rock. But either way, um, those Islamic tr Twitter trends started from Ramadan. The first trend, wa the first trend was Ramadan. The other one was Eid. Obviously, Ramadan is ending soon. Eid is starting it up. We do not know if both Muslims will like agree on one day to celebrate Eid together but that does not matter because that happens each and every year but either way um, Eid is coming and I'd like to wish everyone happy Eid before it arrives and you'll get billions of messages on your mobile phone now um, the second trend is actually about the Libyan ex-president so far it is the Muammar Gaddafi they have been saying his name it's just Muammar Gaddafi, I believe, in Arabic or something like that. That asshole is like following Bin Laden's footsteps. Is this Bin Laden 2.0? He is running away, hiding in caves, and he just might show, at, show up at your doorstep saying, oops, wrong place. But either way, he is on the hunt, and well, um, he is a trend on Twitter. Don't ask me how, why, or what the F do Twitter followers or Twitter users are saying about Al Qaddafi, just go to twitter.com and check the trend by yourself. Now, um, there's a big question in mind ever, ever since I heard the name Kardashian. Why the F do we need to keep up with the Kardashians? Who are they? What do they do? And especially, who is Kim Kardashian? What the F, the all huge buzz about her wedding um, a few days ago and what is the point? She is not a top of a notch celebrity. She is not in the same stardom as others like Will Smith, um, even Justin Bieber or um, like the list goes on and on. There are several stars that can have this amount of um, celebrity buzz, celebrity um, screwing things up because of her and well there are lots of other celebrities that we can follow except this one because when I look to her IMDB page and see what she have done 
She did nothing. She doesn't sing. She doesn't act. Who the F is she? She got a sex tape leaked in 2007 and she got all that buzz because of that? What the F? Like, everyone was crazy about her wedding and we need the pictures. They paid millions of dollars to get the wedding album. Are you kidding me? Pay this show to get produced, right? This show deserves it, not Kim Kardashian or whatever her name is, right? No. Well, let's just move on. Forced recruitment. This is the third time and the third consecutive week we discuss forced recruitment, and now it gets confirmed safely, and thank God that I will not be joining the forces against my will, because it is being said that Forced recruitment will be starting the end of this year, December, but they will be taking um, people who are from or born from March 31st of 1978 till March, um, what March, what, yeah, March 30th of 1992. I'm 1995, so no one can touch me. I don't know why, but that is the rule that was... Um, out for the public and well woo yay me and something like that and thank God I will not be joining the forces against my will but sadly my two elder brothers will be joining the forces so good luck with you so either way um, moving on to being forced against our will with um, taking our rights Q8 blog especially banana Q8 got um, like a lawsuit in April, I believe, from Banana, no, not Banana, it's from Benny Hanna. It's a restaurant in the Avenues Mall. The Avenues Mall also made something else in newspapers, but we'll discuss that in a minute. So, um, so this lawsuit, was it, what was it for? Banana Q8 was just simply saying its review about the restaurant. And they might have just said that this, like this type of food, I, he disliked it, so they go crazy and they go bananas on Banana Q8 and they just sue them. But ev eventually Banana Q8 won the case over, but now it is getting reopened, the case is now getting reopened, and now bloggers of Q8 got no rights and no freedom of speech, not like myself because YouTube follows the state's rules that are the First Amendment freedom of speech people and I know when will the First Amendment be applied in Kuwait, but seems like it will never ever get applied as Jericho or Edge likes to say it. But either way, let's move on. The Avenue's notices that was in newspapers, what were the notices about? They said that you cannot use our name, the Avenue's Mall, or our official logos on your blog, or anywhere, or even maybe in YouTube. You cannot do that. Let me just post a picture right now. Boom. That's the Avenue's trademark or logo or a photo. I do not know what I put right there. But either way, are you going to sue me now? No way, because you cannot do that. Seriously, you can't. So I got only two words to those people who think that the Internet is not a red line and can be like touched the first amendment can be on the internet itself if you cannot believe me i got only two words and then you can come and sue me so um just come a little bit closer yeah come on come on this is to the people who think that they can sue whoever they want online so i got two words it's not suck it believe me it's not it screw you all right you got no power against the internet bloggers or myself on YouTube so yeah screw you now <laughs> that's funny but anyway now let's move on do you know David Letterman the host of the late night talk show um a competitor of mine but either way um someone named Omar El Basrawi threatened him he he said in his own words over um a jihadi website he said that and they also started a fatwa on him. Fatwa means uh, lots of things in, in Arabic, but apparently it means in English, um, I don't know, a conspiracy maybe, I don't know. But either way, so they said, and they are threatening David Letterman that they will cut off his tongue. Of course, David Letterman did not care about what they said. And he went on his show again and 
laughed at them and stuff went on and on. Of course you saw it, but I do not know what the F is going through these crazy jihadists after Bin Laden's death, especially after Bin Laden's death and well, that is simply, simply crazy and I'd love to see what they want to do to me too if they watch the show. But either way, now, um, last week I announced the 24 finalists for the semi-finals and now five of the first 12 acts performing from the previous um, semi-finals um, results and stuff like that. It went on Tuesday and the results were on Wednesday and here are the five that are moving to the top ten finals match, oh match, that's not a match, but either way, finals show and those five contestants are as followed, Lise Agnes, Poppy Life, um, Miami All-Stars, um, West Springfield dance team and the fans favorite team I Illuminate. I'm pulling for team I Illuminate and Pop Life because they're all unique in their own style. The, I, the team I Illuminate are bringing new dance move and new technology to the world and Pop Life are just young hardcore um, singing band and stuff but they, I love their voice the lead singer is awesome and I believe these two will get in a heated battle and now let's Steve move Steve Jobs resigns from Apple but remains the chairman of the company it, this is just like Mr. McMahon's resigning or well he did not get resigned he got fired or relieved of his duties but remained as the chairman of the board so now McMahon and Steve Jobs can go on a golf tournament and play and just do not care about the WWE and Apple, but rumors have been speculating again about the release of the iPhone phone, iPhone phone, that's a new thing, the iPhone 4, excuse me, and well, they are saying that since Steve Jobs dropped a bombshell, there will be another one dropped next week with the announcement of the iPhone 5 keynote or announcement, and will it be made by Steve Jobs himself, as he does have some duties left as a chairman of the board and well many questions have been unanswered why did he resign when will the iPhone 5 come and if it comes who will present it all the questions will be answered and who is the new company's CEO and we'll find out who will replace him and stuff like that more on him later on the coming episodes I'm screwing things up but either way this is like my third time ladies and gentlemen do not count the other ones because 80 days of vacation is like a lot. But either way, let's move on. We got, um, um, what the F is happening? Like, Apple won't let my app get processed? Like, what the F? You know, recently I have been in contact with several developers and finally I got the app developed but now they are saying we need to put more contact to the more content to the app itself I tried adding more but now the web app is now available on the internet you can get it you just need to log into tinyurl.com slash the extreme app and now then you are gonna hit the uh, button that you are seeing in the picture you're gonna hit it and then you're gonna hit add to home screen and then just rename the app to whatever you want to name it. Just make it short and simple like the Extreme app, Extreme app, or just Extreme, or whatever you want to name the app after me. But either way, the app will lead you to these videos from my YouTube channel, um, the tweets from my Twitter and my Facebook feed, and also you're going to have special tab for pictures. Um, there's also the sub the shows information and the history being behind the birth of the Extreme Show, all that in the amazing app. So you saw how to install it, so just install it and get the latest um, like episodes of the Extreme Show each Friday and with the sub-shows and whatnot. But either way, ladies and gentlemen, get that app. And that's it for the Extremely Reloading episode. Wow, I am heated right now. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with the Friday Night Movie Hunt. Welcome back to the Extreme Show Reloaded. And it's now time 
for the Extreme Friday Night Movie Hunt of Friday, August 26, 2011, of course, tonight. And our first movie is entitled Do, Do Not Be Afraid of the Dark, starring Katie Holmes and Guy Pearce. Whatever. So now, um, going on to the second movie of the evening, it is entitled Columbiana, starring Zoe Saldana and Michael Vartan, or something like that. And our last movie of the evening will be entitled Our Idiot Brother, that is my favorite of the evening. It is comedy, of course, starring, starring Paul Rudd and Elizabeth Banks. Go check out those movies in theaters tonight, nationwide, hopefully. And we're back with Ward Wrestling Entertainment Catch Up. And our first thing we got on the list tonight for you is the opening of Monday Night Raw was a huge conspiracy behind it. The Rio, Cena, Punk, Triple H. In that mix, two competitors, CM Punk and John Cena, both previous WWE champion holders and championship holders. And now they are demanding a rematch. I truly believe that both CM Punk and Cena deserve the rematch as they have it in their contract signed with, um, or it says, the rematch clause. And either way, Triple H came out and decided to make a main event for the number one contendership um, for the WWE Championship. But they did not say at Night of Champions. But either way, it is between CM Punk and John Cena and more on that after we discuss a little bit more things. So now, in that mix of Monday Night Raw, we got new tag team champions. That's right, tag team championships do not belong to the previous Nexus allies. Um, to, uh, what's his name? O Otunga and Michael McGilligan or something like that. But either way, your new champs are Kofi Kingston and Evan Airborne. They are amazing and they got to, tw to Twitter and discussed with the fans what's their team's knee name. And I generated a few ones. We got the, the Flying Boom Boom team or something like that. They, I, I, I read a lot, but I do not remember what I pitched in at. But you probably will see it on the Extreme app. But either way... Um, more we got, well, congrats to the new champs, let's move on, we got, yeah, so, Kevin Nash is still is crazy and saying that I received the text message from Triple H, CM Punk comes out and it says, okay, I believe you, you, you got that message, but Triple H did not send it, so who did send that, Triple H also was in that ring, and words of, oh, well, heated words have been trending between them, trending is not in the, context of this subject but either way so CM Punk believes that since um, Triple H is married to Stephanie McMahon and since CM Punk talked to CM, uh, to Stephanie that evening before his match at SummerSlam she got angry and then she got the phone from Triple H he got well she got her phone no she got his phone and then she sent that text message to Kevin Nash that's his prediction and then, um, Kevin, well, CM Punk just said that you probably just put everything in that um, purse of Stephanie McMahon. I'm going like, I'm going down right now. But either way, so you put everything in that purse and you just put your suit and then your balls. And then that dropped the bombshell on Kevin Nash and he punched him. Triple H was angry. Why did you put your hands on him? He did not work here. Blah, blah, blah. Later on in the evening, John Laurinaitis, if that's his name, the executive talent relations, blah, 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 told Triple H that Kevin Nash just got in an accident and he is rushed into a nearby hospital and Triple H ran to that or rushed to that hospital to see what happened with him. Now to the main event of Monday Night Raw, Punk, Cena, who will win? Obviously so far none of them won fair and square. The first time they met it was CM Punk versus Cena at Money in the Bank and John Laurinaitis cost Cena the championship and then at SummerSlam CM Punk defeated Cena but his leg was on the bottom rope and Triple H did not do his duties as a referee. Now, this is the third time they meet and still to me it is oh, zero to zero. 
And then Kevin Nash comes out of nowhere at the end of the match. Before it ends, actually. And then he just says, CM Punk, it's not over yet. CM Punk just tells him, come on, come on. And then he turns his back. And with an AA, this is just like how CM Punk won the championship and left Chicago with it. And, well, to me, it is still O to an O. And Kevin Nash left the arena, but now the question is, did John Laurinaitis lie to Triple H? And did John Laurinaitis send that text message to um, Kevin Nash? And is this all about how CM Punk tweets John Laurinaitis? And is it all about how CM Punk kicked him a while ago on Monday Night Raw? So now... Cena won, then Del Rio, who was watching the whole match, came into the ring and kicked his ass right there. And then Raw went off air, and the link is again right there below. And if you're watching through a mobile device, you need to go to the description and click on the YouTube video for the Raw going off air this past Monday. As Del Rio was kicking the hell out of um, Cena, John Laurinaitis just pulled him over away, and then Raw went off air. What happened in that thingy was like the Rio and was joined by both Miz and R Truth and they kicked both CM Punk and John Cena but then they capitalized the moment and they controlled the whole situation and then they did the old thingy. CM Punk cheers, they, he gets cheers, he puts the cult of personality. I believe Cena did the same thing and he got the, the My Time song. But what I saw in the video that they raised, or I meant Cena raised CM Punk's hand at the end of the evening. Check out the video right below. And now, finally, Friday Night SmackDown returns to the show. As a few hours away, or a few hours ago, you watched it on Sci-Fi. Bret Hart opened the show as the special guest GM for a night, as Theodore Long was not available, available at the time. So Bret Hart comes out speak, talking about the Super SmackDown live event this Tuesday, live on Sci-Fi, and he was talking about the main event, which will be between Mark Henry and Randy Orton, as Henry won the Battle Royal last week on Friday for the number one contendership. But now... Christian returns from SummerSlam, comes in, and he says that he has it in his um, rematch or his contract that he has a rematch clause and he needs to invoke it. And no one gets a chance before him because he was the previous champion. Um, Bret Hart, like, be, like, just did that match on, and he just switched it up with Mark Henry. And now Christian will be facing Orton for the World Champion, Ford Heavyweight Championship. Excuse me. But now the twist is that. Um, he will be competing in a steel cage match against our Orton, so he will not have any more excuses. And now, let's move on with the main event of Friday Night SmackDown, which was the rematch of SummerSlam, Mark Henry and Sheamus going right out of the Battle of the Behemoths, as Michael Cole likes to call it. Well, either way. So, the match went on just like at SummerSlam, and it ended a little bit just like SummerSlam, but this time Sheamus stood tall at the end of the match, and Sheamus just with the bro kick through the announce table, and he went back to the ring with the 10 count, just like how he lost at SummerSlam with a count out thingy. But either way, so... They still did not defeat each other in my book, and I believe they will be competing in a false count anywhere match, or a no, no DQ match, or a no holds bar match, or a street fight, or ma fart? Haha, <laughs> that's new. A street fight match, or um, an extreme rules match. This is the extreme show, but either way. What happened after the match is Mark Henry getting in the ring and getting his hands dirty with Sheamus. And well, and his last move was amazing with the world's strongest slam right on the steel steps. That was epic. That was the ending of this Friday Night SmackDown broadcast from Sci-Fi, and it will rebroadcast in a new live episode this Tuesday night, featuring both superstars from Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown, and the show will be called Super SmackDown. It will be amazing. We'll be seeing. 
Orton defending the world title against Christian in a steel cage match. Do not miss that. This this Tuesday live on Sci-Fi. And now um, that's the, all the time that I got for you. Thanks for watching this episode. Um, share it with your friends. Let me trend. Um, spread it around your friends. Um, subscribe, comment right below, and like this video. And also follow me on Twitter at Jack and Mazizi use the hashtag the extreme show to join the conversation and also um, ask questions about tonight's reloading segment and what ha it had it had nine things and well it was all amazing so just if you want to discuss anything in that criteria or whatever they want to call it but either way um, also like the Facebook fan page of the extreme show um, it's the link is right down below. Thanks for watching. And coming right next is the Extreme Quick QHO latest episode, Scene Skip 2011. Eight movies will be right here telling you which are the movies that are good for this season or whatever you really like to call. But either way, you're gonna check it out in a few minutes after this show airs on YouTube. You will get the Scene Skip. Uh, movies as their booking or reservation for those movies will be opening tomorrow night so thanks for watching again wish to see you on this upcoming episode the extreme quick QHN also I'd like to see you weekly on Fridays on the extreme quick or the, it's not quick it's the extreme show itself so um, download the app I told you how to and the link is everything is, the, is in the description box thanks for watching this is Jack and Mazzini pissing right off